Hi, I'm Harris Laproff. I work for the Freedom of the Press Foundation. Uh, we run a number of projects that are using Wagtail. If you're interested in hearing more about those, you can go look up my talk that I gave last year um, called Using, Wag uh, Using Wagtail to Fight for Press Freedom. Um, today, I want to talk to you about solving your problems by spelunking the Wagtail code. Um, now, to start off with, I just want to see how much I'm preaching to the choir here. How many people in this room have spent a fair bit of time reading through the Wagtail code? Okay. So, some of you. Hopefully, you will all still find something interesting in this talk. Um, for those of you who did not raise your hands, I'm hoping that I can convince you that reading the Wagtail code is approachable, um, and it might solve your problems, and it will make you a better developer. So first of all, how do we solve problems? Um, I'm talking about when you first have a problem you want to solve, a feature you want to build, and you sit down at your computer and you think to yourself, I have no idea where to get started with this. Um, what do you do then? Well, first thing I hope most of us do is go to the docs. Wagtail has lots of features. There's lots of stuff built into it. And the best way to find out how they work is by reading the docs. The Wagtail docs are great. They're always getting better. If you want to improve them, I hope you'll contribute to them. Um, but eventually, you're going to want to do something with your projects that is a little more off the beaten path, something the documentation writers didn't think to write about. So where might you go then? Well, you might go to those community support systems that uh, Tom was talking about earlier, the Wagtail Slack, Stack Overflow. We've got a very nice, very active community of developers who want to help you out. Um, but of course, that's limited by you know the people who know what you're trying to work on being available and online. And you're also sort of relying on the fact that even though you might not be familiar with the code that you're trying to interact with, you're hoping that someone else is. So, if you yourself haven't read that code, you're hoping someone else online has. Um, if you don't find anything there, or maybe before you go to ask other people for help, you might try by experimentation. Maybe you throw a bunch of things into a Python file, add in a bunch of print statements, see what it spits out. Um, that's not quite reading the code, but it is getting a little deeper. You're making some reasonable guesses about what you think the code looks like and uh, getting a sense of the shape of it. And if you're really good at this, maybe you uh, pull up an interactive uh, shell and you play around. Uh, I really love using IPDB for this purpose, especially because it comes with this nice tab auto-completion. So you can just like pull up an object, tab auto-complete, see all the different methods on that object, and play around with it. It's a really great way, if you're not reading the code, to just like get a sense of the shape of all the objects that you're working with. Um, but let's say that you try all of those things and you're like still not quite sure how to approach the problem that you're working on. What might you do next? Um, and actually, I'll open this up to the room right now. Are there any ways to approach this sort of problem solving that you can think of that I haven't mentioned? Yeah. Using an IDE. Mm, yes, that's a good point. Using an IDE. Anyone else? Um, one thing that I thought of that I didn't mention is, you know, maybe you uh, hire someone who's more knowledgeable than you to do it. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that's the most efficient option. I don't know how to solve this problem. Someone out there probably does. I'll pay them some money. Uh, sometimes I'll look at other, like, like I'll pull up the Wagtail Bakery or other example projects that I can find, or sometimes I poke around on like the Torchbox website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in some ways, that is uh, what I'll be talking about. I mean, I'm talking specifically about reading the core code, but reading a code from other projects also is a great way to do it. <laughs> all right, so let's say you've exhausted all of those options and you're still not sure what to do. You know, the documentation doesn't cover your problem. Maybe you're on a timeline. You can't wait for someone to respond to you on Stack Overflow. Um, experimentation is like not telling you very much. You don't have the budget to hire someone else to do it. Um, you know, obviously, these are all great ways of approaching problems, and they will all, most of the time, one of those ways will get you the solution that you're looking for. But you know, eventually, they all have limits, and you will run into a problem where you just don't know how to solve it. Um, and what do you do next? You read the code. Um, 
If you haven't done it before, like I said, I want to tell you that reading the code is easier than you'll expect it to be, and it means that you will never be stuck. It is the only solution where it really makes your power to complete your project unlimited. Um, and I think that we, as Wagtail developers, are lucky that we code in a language that is designed to be easy to read. Um, you'll often hear Python developers say, the code is the documentation. Well, those developers are wrong, and please write real documentation for your projects. But they're not totally off. You know, Python is designed to be easy to read, and it encourages you to write code in a way that other people can read it. And of course, in particular, uh, well-maintained open source projects like Wagtail and Django um, are usually pretty well organized and predictable um, for finding things in them. So why should you read the code? Um, aside from the obvious that it might solve your problem, um, I think reading the code also has a few other benefits. Uh, for one thing, it makes you a better coder. You'll get a sense of how other people write code. Um, and especially with a project like Wagtail, it can build your repertoire of best, best, of best practices. Um, it also means that when you're in the habit of reading other people's code, while you're writing code, you'll be thinking about the next person who's going to be reading your code, and so you'll write better code for them. Um, when you read the code, you'll understand your tools better. You might come across things that help you understand why something in Wagtail works the way that it does, or you might build knowledge for the next problem you encounter. And when you read the code, sorry, I have bullet points for this. And when you read the code, you'll know whose fault it is. You know, every once in a while, I come across a problem, and it's, I've written some code, and I think it should be working. And I'm like, oh, this just isn't working. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I'll go in, and I'll read the code, and I'll be it's not me. There's it's something funny in this code. code. And if you, and can, if you actually can actually read the code, read the you code, can say that definitively. And then you can, and then you can, then you can go, go to, to Wagtail, Wagtail GitHub, GitHub and open an, and open an issue, and everyone's life will be improved. And finally, and finally, reading the code, reading code prepares, prepares you to contribute, contribute back. back. When you're in when the you're habit of reading the Wagtail core, core code, code, it will feel a little less intimidating, less intimidating when you want to add your own. Um, so, um, so how would you, how would you actually, actually get, started get started reading, reading the, code? the code? I'm going to I'm going walk, to walk you, you through one example of a problem that we encountered um, that we solved by reading the code. Um, but before I do, I want to do a quick review for anyone who is um, you know, maybe a little newer to Python uh, on just how Python import paths work. Um, so, um, so very quick, very quick review. review, you've, you've seen, seen these import, import statements, statements all over your Python, Python files. files. Um, um, basically, basically, what these what do these is do they tell Python, Python to, find to find a file, a file on, your on your computer and load and that, that file. file. Um, and so, and so there are some there sort some of special, special rules, rules for how Python, Python interprets, interprets those paths, paths into files. files. As you can see, this import this statement could resolve to several different files. It might look for an object called skyblue sky in nature.py, or it might look for it if nature is a directory in nature slash init.py, or if both nature and skyblue are directories, it might look for it way down in nature slash skyblue slash init.py. Anyway, anyway, hopefully, hopefully you, get you get the basic idea, idea of an import, import statement. statement. It's reading from the file, and if you and want to, you, you can go find that file, file and see what it says. What it says. Um, um, and, in general, and in general, Python, Python will look for those, for those files, files either in the, in the directory that the current script, script is being, being run, run from. from. So, so for, for most of us working on a Django project, project that'll, that'll be the same, same directory that manage.py is in. Or it'll, or it'll look, for, look them for them in the packages, in the packages that you've installed, installed using pip or pip, or pip, pip or whatever, or whatever you, you use for package, for package management. management. Um, that's, um, that's a little, a little bit of an oversimplification, oversimplification but, in but in general, that's, that's why you can why import, you can say, say home.models home from your own project, project but, you but you can also import wag.topcore.models from the wagtail that you've pip installed. Um, and um, if you're and really if you're curious, curious to see all of the directories where it's working for these files, you can run this little code snippet. Um, um, an, interesting an interesting thing to thing note to about, this, about code this code snippet, snippet is, that is that if you run it from a shell like this, this you, will you will get a different, a different result, result than if you run it from inside of a file. Of a file. So. But, but enough about, enough about import paths. Let's talk let's about, talk my, about problem. my problem. 
So many of you may, may know, you may that, know Wagtail that Wagtail has an excellent form, form builder. builder. Um, if you've um, never if used it, it, it basically lets the developer create a page type, type which, which content, content editors can use to build, to build a form, form basically, basically like, like a lightweight, lightweight version of Google, Google Forms, Forms or something. Or something. Um, and um, and uh, uh, we use, uh, in, particular, uh, in particular, you can build a form that will send an email to a particular email address every time you get a submission to that form. Um, so, um, we so we use these all, these all over the place, place in the FBX, FBX projects. projects. We use we them use for our basic, basic contact, contact form. form. Um, we've, used we've used them for, for running, running a user, user survey, survey. Um, stuff, um, like, stuff that. like that. But, but the, form the form lets you specify, you specify the form lets the, form the content, content editor, editor specify, specify a subject line. line. And that and subject line, line will be used in sending the email for every submission that comes from that particular form. Um, um, which, you know, which, you might be your inbox, inbox looking, a looking a little like this. Like this. We found we this found a little this frustrating. frustrating. Firstly, we, Firstly, we wanted, wanted more informative subject, subject lines, lines, but in particular, but in particular because, because we actually have several of those forms, forms feed, directly feed directly into, into our, our support, support ticketing, ticketing system. system. Uh, and uh, so and it'll so automatically send that email to our ticketing system. Ticketing system, ticketing ticketing system, system will open an issue and all of the issues will be called form submission. Very frustrating. What we actually wanted is we actually wanted the site visitor to be able to give us a one-line subject when they're filling, they're filling out the out contact, contact form, form and for that, and for that to, become to become the subject, the subject of the of email. email. So that's our, so that's our problem. problem. Everyone, Everyone understands, understands what we're trying, what we're trying to do. We want dynamic, dynamic subject, subject lines for form submissions. submissions. So, so let's start, let's by, start trying by trying to solve it using, using a few of the methods, methods that, I that I talked about before. About before. Let's read the documentation. Now, the form builder docs are actually pretty good. They're not too long. They cover most of the basic stuff you want to do with forms, but I don't really see anything in here that has to do with my topic of changing the subject line. You know, I can see how to display form information in the admin. Not too much else. So that's a bust. That's a bust. All right, let's, All right, try, let's try some of that community support we talked about, talk about earlier. earlier. Now, I could go, go online right now and post, post this question to Slack or post it on Stack Overflow, but that would be, take a while, probably be a little boring. So as an experiment, I'm just going to ask this room, sort of dangerous thing to do in a room that includes core contributors. Does anyone here immediately know how I would solve this problem? What's your guess? Just control F, um, what was the subject exactly within the code base and find if there's a file that looks right. So form submission within the code base. So you're, what you're suggesting is that we read the code, which is what we will, what we will do in a moment. You to read the code. Right, so like... You know, we yeah, asked the we question, asked the nobody responded. responded. I often I have this experience. I ask a very complicated, complicated questions in the Wagtail Slack, and, Slack and, and I don't get, I don't a, get response, a response, which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. What I would probably do, and maybe this is cheating because I've been playing with the form builder recently, but I know that it, it uses, like, I forget the plugin, but it like it wraps around Jacob's ability to send emails. So I would probably then look up that documentation mm. and then probably ask, among that community, looking for like dynamic subject lines instead of looking specifically at the Wagtail form builder, but like, however, it's on the emails and see if there's any suggestions there for like customizing subject yeah. lines. Yeah, yeah. If I can put that back in. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, Definitely a good, a good thought. thought. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and Django's and form sending does have like a, like a subject, subject line, line argument that it takes, takes which, we which we will see in a moment. moment. But, but yeah, basically, yeah, basically no one immediately knows how to do this. To do this. Um, if I ask someone back to Slack, it's possible someone else will like read the code for me and be like, hey, it looks like there's this thing. But for now, I'm going to walk through our process of reading the code. Um, um, oh, right. Oh, right. But, before but before we do that, we do let's, that. Try, let's try experimentation. I forgot I about that. that. Um, um, so, so I'm going like, to like start up our project, project here. We use Docker Compose. Compose. Um, pull up pull an up interactive, interactive Django, Django shell. shell. I'll, I'll import, import our form, form page, page model. model. And then, and then what I'm going to do, do is I'm just going to instantiate um, one instance, instance of it so I can play around, play around with it and see what it looks like. So exactly. here we go, we're creating a page. page. I'm not actually, I'm not actually saving, saving a publish, publish on this page. page. You know, if, you know, if I, I get, get to playing play around, around a little more, I might do that. But for now, I'm just creating this page object, and then I'm going to look at it. And wow, that's a lot of attributes and methods. I really have like no idea where to get started exploring here. There's like. All sorts, all sorts of stuff, of stuff that, that has to do with the Wagtail tree, tree. There's, there's like, like 
I, I, it's a lot. It's a lot. Right. Right. Um, so, so experimentation. experimentation. I could maybe I could find, find out, out what I'm trying to find, find out here. here. I think I there think was like a like send mail method, method on the previous, on the previous screen, 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 but you know, you know it's not going to be quick. Be quick. So, so let's, let's try reading, try the, reading code. the code. Um, first, um, first of all, this, of all, line, this line comes straight from the documentation. It's an import statement, statement like I was like talking, talking about before. about before. And it basically, and it basically tells, tells us what file in Wagtail we're going to be looking for this particular, particular code. code. Um, now, um, you, now could you could try finding that finding file in your own, your own file, file system on your hard drive. Usually I just go to github.com and like browse the Wagtail repo until I find the file. Important thing there is make sure that you're browsing whatever version of Wagtail you have installed. Usually things don't change too much versions, but every once in a while, while you're like, this code doesn't, doesn't look, look like what's, what's happening, happening. Um, um, and then you'll realize. Then you'll realize. So, so here's, here's the code, the code from, from that particular, that particular file. file. This is the abstract <laughs> email form model um, that, that the documentation, the documentation tells, tells you to inherit when developing your forms. forms. And, and this looks very promising. promising. I can actually I can see, see that right over there, there, there is a there send mail, mail method. And it seems, it seems you know, like I can like make a reasonably educated guess. guess. But that's, but that's probably, probably the method that's, method that's getting called when these form submissions are being sent out. Now, if I want to be absolutely sure of that, I can read a little more code. I can see that there's also this process form submission method. And if I read down a couple lines, I can see that, yes, if there's a two address defined on the model, then it looks like it does call the self self sends mail method. Um, now, I'm not quite sure where this process form submission method is getting called. So let's just spool around spool to be around sure. To be if sure. I scroll, if I scroll up, up a little bit, bit I can see the see abstract, abstract form superclass that, super class that that one was inheriting from. from. And I see and it has this serve method. method. Now, now from, from doing, doing a lot of work with Wagtail, with Wagtail I, know I know that the serve, serve method is what Wagtail, Wagtail pages, pages use to send to responses, responses to, to requests. To requests. Um, and um, if I and read if I through read the serve method, I can see right at the right top, top, if the request, if the request is a post, is a post request, request um, which means which that it says form, form submission, submission, then, then it, it will check if the form, form is valid, valid and, yes, and yes, it will call it will process form submission, form submission which, which as we saw before, before also, also calls send mail. mail. So, so I can feel pretty confident now that I was correct that the send mail method is the one I want to be looking at. I went through that pretty quickly. Does anyone have any questions about that? Great. So now, so now, going back going down back to this abstract, abstract email, email form, form, we can read, we can through, read through the send, send mail method, method and see what it's doing. doing. Um, so, um, it so it looks like the first, the first line, line, it's taking, it's taking the, two the two address, address fields field, and, and it's splitting it by it comma. comma. It's a comma-separated comma separated field, field and stripping, stripping off any white space, space, and that's how it's getting an array of email addresses. addresses. Seems pretty Seems predictable pretty and reasonable. reasonable. Um, the next um, line, it defines the empty array for content, and then if I, if I look through, through that, that four structure, structure there, there, you know, there's, you know, there's a, lot a lot of stuff going, going on there, there but, but I think I can think basically I can tell that it's going through every, every field that's, that's defined on the form, form and it's creating, and it's creating a, string a string that is key colon value, value for that, that field, field, and then putting, and then putting it into our little content array, which makes sense. If it's going to send the same email, it expects the email to have the like form question, form answer, and then it joins those all up together with the lines. Um, that makes that sense. Makes That's sense. the contents of the contents email. Of the email. And then, and then that, last that last line there is the there crucial line for solving, for solving our problem. problem. I can see that it see calls that the send mail function, function, which is different from the send mail method. method. Um, um, and it and gives it, it a subject, subject content, content, and two, two addresses, addresses, and the from and address. address. So I can so see, I can see this, that's where the subject is being chosen. And it is, in fact, calling the subject as the model field subject. Now, what I actually want is I want that to change dynamically per form submission. I want it to pull the subject from one of the form fields that's being addressed in that for loop. Um, so now that we understand the code, do we all understand the code? Yeah. Yeah. You said that send mail function is different from the method. Where is the back from? Mm. That's, great. That's a great question. question. You'll notice, You'll notice that, that I've omitted that in statement. statement. We'll get to we'll it, get a, little to it a little later. later. <laughs> for now, <laughs> for it's now enough it's for me to see that that, that, that is called sends mail, mail, and I pretty much, pretty much know, what, know it what it does. Um, um, so, so here's, here's the, the 
email, email contact, contact form, form model, model that we wrote. That we wrote. It, inherits it inherits more abstract more email form. form. And, and there, and might, there be might be a number, a number of different ways of solving, ways of solving this particular problem. problem. We, chose we chose to solve it just by overriding that send mail method with our own custom send mail method. And we basically copied it line for line, except we added a few lines in there that you can see at 12, 20, 21, and 25, where we basically change the logic that defines the subject. Um, and, in um, and in particular, in 20 and 21, 21 where it's part, part of that loop going, going over the different, different form fields, fields if, it encounters if it encounters a field that has the label subject, subject. So, if so if a content editor, editor has said this form, form should have a field, have a field and its label, its label is subject, subject, then it will, then it will pull, pull the value, the value from, that from that field that the website that the visitor, visitor has filled in, in and it will interpolate it into a new subject line, which we'll use for sending the email. If that if never encounters that field, that field there's, there's no field, field on this form labeled, labeled subject, then it just then it uses the model field subject, subject as it as used it to. Do. So there's our so there's solution. Our solution. We, solved we solved that problem. That problem. Um, so that's um, so an example that's of solving, solving a problem, problem that, that we could never we could have never arrived, arrived at without, without looking at the code. code. That, that method is not documented. You know, you no know, one in no this one in room could tell me that it existed, that it existed or how it or worked. How it worked. Um, but um, it was but like it was pretty like easy for me to go to, go to GitHub, GitHub, find the files, read through, read through them, them, understand them, understand and them, make the necessary changes. changes. Um, um, but, but reading the code, the code is not just about, about finding undocumented, undocumented methods. methods. You know, you let's know, say we wanted, we wanted to do something, something else. else. Not, not only do we want to have a dynamic subject line, but we also want to really spruce, really spruce up, up these emails, emails, make them make fancy, fancy HTML, HTML emails, emails instead of plain text, you know, tables, tables and colors, colors and maybe an animated, and animated GIF, or GIF or something. Um, um, how would we how go would we about go doing, about doing that? that? Well, well, let's look, let's at, our look at our form page, page code again. again. Um, now, you'll um, notice this time, time that I did include, include that import line, line that you were asking about. Wagtail has its own send mail function. And, uh, and uh, this, this is, is the class, class that we defined, defined, but we basically but we copied, copied that, that over, over, so we copied over the same import that they were they using. Were um, so, so if I'm looking at this, this, I don't see, I don't any, see any obvious, obvious way, of way of sending this email, email as HTML. HTML. You know, it's, it's got, got this content, content field, field the, the content, content gets fed into the send mail function there, but the content right now is plain text, and I don't have any reason to believe if I fed it in HTML, it would send it out as anything other than plain text. Um, so I'm so curious, I'm curious what's, going what's going on there. I want to send an HTML email. I want to know if I can do it without too much modification to this function and writing my own mail sending logic. Um, so from that import statement, I might go see what Wagtail send mail utility looks like. Um, so here's um, so that. that. Um, and, and before we, we even get to answering, answering the question, question of how to solve, solve that particular, particular problem, problem, I want to point out like there's, there's a bunch of things that I learned from, from reading, reading this function, function that I would never have known, known otherwise. otherwise. Um, for example, um, for I can example, see in that, that top block there, there that, that you know you, you can know, provide a from email to this send mail function, and if you don't provide one, there are like three different fallbacks. You know, first it'll fall back to the Wagtail notification from email setting. And if and that if doesn't that exist, it'll we'll fall back to the default, default from email, email setting. setting. And if that doesn't, if that doesn't exist, it'll fall back to a hard coded webmaster at local host. Local host. Now, now, none of that's, none of that's useful, useful information, information to me right, right now, but, but you know, maybe you know, someday, someday down, down the road, road I'll encounter a weird issue, issue where we're seeing a bunch of emails coming in from webmaster at local host. And when I see that, I'll be like, oh, I've seen that before. And I'll have a pretty good idea of where to start looking. Um, um, we can also, we can also see, see in that, in that second, second block there, there that I could, I could give it a give custom, it a custom email, email connection if I wanted, if I wanted to. to. Again, Again, it's not something, not something I really need to do right, right now to solve, to solve this particular, this particular problem, problem, but it's pretty cool to know that I could do that. And then uh, right there in the bottom few lines, I can see some stuff that's actually relevant to my problem. It looks like there is actually a way to send an HTML method. Um, and you know, it seems like it's pulling it from the keyword arguments in the uh, send mail signature. So if I provide an HTML message keyword argument, it seems like it will send that as an HTML message. So there's another, there's another situation, situation where reading has given, has given me the tools, tools I need to solve my problem. problem. I'm not going to take you through the whole, through the whole process, process of actually doing, doing that, but hopefully you can see how you would get started, started doing that, that and, and you can see, see how reading the code made that knowledge that possible. possible. Um, um, so I'm hoping so by now that if you've never done it before, I've made the prospect of reading the code to solve your problem seem approachable, 
like it might it actually, might actually help, you, help you um, and, um, help, and you help you see how, see how it can it help can you help arrive at solutions. solutions. Um, so, um, I so I would say so whenever, whenever, you're, whenever working you're working on a problem, on a problem and, you and you run into a brick wall, I recommend going to the Wagtail code or the Django code or whatever you're working with and reading through it. And even if you don't know specifically what you're looking for, it can be a great way to just get like a better perspective on the specific area of functionality that you're working with. Now, if you still feel a little intimidated by it, if you're still like, if those code blocks went by and you're like, wow, Harris just like understood those instantly and I had no idea what was going on in them, that's okay. Reading the code can be difficult, and especially in code bases that are more complicated than Wagtail, you know, it can take a lot of time to do. But it's also a skill that you can build, and the more you practice it, the better that you're going to get at surfacing the stuff that's relevant to you and understanding it. And the more you do it, the better you're going to understand your tools, the better your own code will be, and the more prepared you will be to contribute back to the community. So thanks for listening. We are running a little late. Should I take any questions, Tim? All right. Well, we'll take a question if anyone has one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it looks like you basically copy the existing method and added a couple lines to it. Uh, so I'm wondering, would what would you do to refactor that, or if you wanted to, like, you can see that it's like a useful thing for other people to use, would you then like try to? How would you try to add that? Mm -hmm. That's a great, That's a great question. question. In this particular case, because we were using like a specific subject line, it didn't, it didn't seem, seem like a, general, a, general, a, specific a specific field name. It didn't, it didn't seem like a general, like a general, solution. general like solution. Like it seems like, like a bit of sort of hidden behavior, behavior if you just, if you just add, add this special, special subject, subject field, field that you will apply to it. But I could imagine either releasing a third party package that had a slightly modified abstract email form. Um, or, um, or, you know, or, if you I came, know, if I came, came up with a more general, general solution, solution um, then, I then I can imagine, imagine putting, putting in a pull request with that method, method to the Wagtail core. core. Does that answer your question? question? Um, um, I'll take one, I'll take more, one question more question if anyone, if anyone has one. Has one. Great. Great. Well, thank well, you so thank much. Thank you so much.